Uh, thanks, uh, Ten Academy, for starting the recording. I'm just going to wait for a bit more, few more people to to join. Uh, please, uh, Ten Academy, allow um, my request on my laptop to join. Uh, Ten Academy, please let me in. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen now. Okay, this is weird. Just let me know where you can see my screen. Okay, great. 
Um, okay, so while we wait for more people to join, um, I think, okay, let's do this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so guys, could you, could you navigate to, to this URL? Um, I, I'd like the session to be as interactive as possible um, because there's a lot going on here. Uh, so if I'm just explaining um, and people are not doing it, uh, then, you know, it's going to be um, a problem. I mean, yeah, it, it's going to be very difficult to understand. Okay, so I'm going to send it. Someone has asked to send it in the chat. I'm going to send it in the chat. Uh, yeah, just navigate to that URL. Okay. So if you can navigate to that URL, this one here, and clone it um, into your laptop, whatever computer you're using. Okay. Um, yeah, just please comment. Well, first, my bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, don't clone it yet as it is. Um, so clone it. First fork it. Okay. Uh, first fork it. So just uh, come to it and then come here and then fork it. Uh, so I've already forked it. So this won't work. Okay. We'll choose another organization. But I forked it. So you fork it into your account. Click fork. Uh, so I'm just going to demonstrate here. Click fork. Okay. And then now you see up here uh, the the repo name will change. It will have your name, your account, and and the name of the repo. And then you come to code, and then you copy that. Um, I use SSH most of the time. So whichever options you're using here. Um, and then go into your terminal uh, and then just paste that, just do it clone, okay? And then it will paste that onto, onto your machine. Okay, so please let me know uh, in, the, in the chat um, when, you're done, when you're done cloning. Okay. Okay, thanks, Michael. Let's let's please let's clone. Thanks, Rafa. Thanks, Martin. So first, first you fork and then you clone. Please remember that, um, so that when you've done that, so that when you go to your repo, uh, so when you go to your repo, so if it's correct, when you type this on your repo, get remote minus v then it will have your account name here, just like it has mine here, right? You don't have ThoughtWorks, right? So here, uh, this one has ThoughtWorks on it. Uh, so it must change when you come to your repo, it must show your name. So that if you need to push, et cetera, and give access, then you, you are able to do those kinds of things. Okay, let's see. More people, please. Okay, keep cloning. Um, in the meantime, um, I will go here uh, to this one.
Okay, so I'll go to mine, right? Um, so just as an introduction, um, I think where's the article? I think they are similar, these two articles. I think you did here. Okay. Yeah, so they are similar. So I'm just going to post, paste these articles here as well. So that's just some information um, on our topic today. Uh, so I found that the way they explained it here is, is quite good. It's understandable, it's clear. Right? Cool. Ooh. Okay, please ign ignore the second one. It's not the correct link. I'll send the, the correct link um, a bit later. Um, Just check. Um, um, more people done training. Okay. Okay. So, um, just as a short um, explanation. So today we're going to talk about. Um, continuous machine learning, uh, CMF, uh, continuous machine learning, right? Uh, which is which is what we've been doing, um, more especially with the GitHub actions, uh, but it was not at production scale, right? So today we're going to try to do it at production scale. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, what is, um, continuous machine learning? Um, it's, so, okay, so it's, 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 a um, it's a way to implement, um, ML ops. We've talked about ML ops before. Uh, but so, so previously, so with, with normal software, like mobile applications, um, and websites and like your typical backend. Uh, software projects, it's easy. Well, not easy, but they established um, DevOps principles and tools uh, to do, uh, you know, testing and deployment uh, and continuous integration, right? But uh, up until recently, we didn't have that for machine learning, right? So how do you deploy machine learning models at scale uh, quickly uh, and so forth, right? So that's why they came up with you know, this uh, term called continuous uh, machine learning, which is being able to do continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment uh, for machine learning uh, projects. So what makes, um, you know, continuous uh, machine learning difficult as compared to your normal DevOps uh, practices is that we have a number of things 
uh, which, you know, a, a lot of moving parts, right? So with normal software projects, you have got data, uh, you've got, yeah, you don't have data, you only have code that you're, lo you're looking at. But with machine learning, you've got data, uh, you've got, um, you know, the, the code, and then you've got like your exported uh, machine learning, um, you know, models that you have to check, right? You have to check those and they keep changing, right? So how do you, how do you manage such a, an environment when, you know, things are changing in, in multiple areas, right? So that's where this um, continuous machine learning uh, idea comes from. So that's what they're trying to achieve here, right? Uh, so there's this one, there's this sort of implementation here, uh, sort of an attempt to do continuous machine learning. Uh, you can look at it, um, but, So this is quite close to, to the GitHub sections that we're looking at, right? So what they have here, it's very simple, right? Uh, so you commit your code to install, same error, you commit your code, you know, and then within, so you, you know, sort of similar to GitHub sections. Um, and then you can have, uh, same error. Yeah, you see, so you can have like certain instructions here, uh, same L, send comment report, and the report will come out uh, looking something like this, right? You know, this is your model performance, etc. But you specified um, like everything here, right? Uh, so this is quite, you know, it's, it's very, basically it's just using um, get up actions to get that done, right? Um, but I think, it's quite limited. Uh, maybe I don't know enough about it, uh, but you know, from from what I've seen so far, um, you know, there's there's a lot. I mean, first of all, it really depends on on GitHub, right? It's, it's you know, this all of these things are happening uh, via GitHub, right? Um, yeah. So, but what you can do, so the, the other implementation that I've, that we're going to look at today, uh, I mean, this is still worth uh, looking at. Uh, but, you know, from what we'll do today, when you come here, you know, it will, it will be more like a quiz to understand what's going on, right? So we're going to be using this one today. Uh, I still have to find that article because it does um, put things into perspective, but I'll find it. Uh, so we'll use this one. Um, I hope many people have cloned it. Uh, so come in here. Uh, Um, so I'm not sure if you guys can see, there's a, it says that uh, the workshop is divided into several steps, etc. To start from the beginning, click here, right? So let's click that. Let's if you can follow through guys, because it, 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 it makes it, you know, much, much easier if you do. Right? So these are, these are the things that, so we have about, you know, five or six, uh, sort of tutorials we probably won't be we definitely won't be able to get through all, all of them uh but you know from what we'll do today i think we'll be able to continue uh implementing the whole system because this is like a production grade uh system right also took me a while to you know to to go, go through uh, most of it right so, so we've cloned it right um and now what they want us to do um let me just check comments Guys, are you following? Uh, I, I should be moving too fast. Are you following? Yes, yes. Yes, okay, cool. So if you're following, so what you need to do is uh, there's a link there, right? You could actually, you could uh, use your, your fork to navigate. So go to uh, get up uh, personal access token page, right? And it will take you to uh, personal access tokens, right? Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Please engage me so that, um, you know, we're all on the same page, right? Um, so now, okay, so, so what you need to do 
is create a personal access token, right? So you generate new token, you click here, you generate new token, you give it a name. Uh, and I think what you need to do uh, is you need to, you know, give, give um, select repo, and then also select, uh, so you just select user, right? Uh, I think here, there they say select uh, user email, but just select all of user. Uh, yeah, I think that should be fine uh, for now, right? Uh, so we get mine. Let's see. Get mine, see what permissions I've given it. Yeah, you see, given it these permissions. Uh, but I think I've given it more permissions here for this one. Yeah, you see. So you select repo. And then you know, uh, write repo hook, read uh, repo hook, and then you can just select all of user there as well. Yeah. So these are just permissions because we're going to be working with um, other um, other software, right? Which which will need to interact with, with your GitHub repository, so that they need to be authenticated, right? When you're done, uh, you create minus thing updates, but because I've already created. I think it will say uh, create when you're done, right? It will, it will say generate, um, yeah, it will say, thanks, Maron, it will say uh, generate token. So remember those options, just repo and user, um, yeah, and what was the other one? Yeah, and admin, uh, yeah, so it's um, repo, write and read repo hook, right? So those are the ones you need to select. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Pinyam. Didier. Oh, did you? I thought you said you're almost. Uh, Didier, what's your question? Please raise your, uh, ask your question. Yeah, like we have to go to reach that creating a new token. Yes. So you, you are done with that. No, I didn't see where you went from. To, to oh, so, okay. So in the fork, right? Remember you forked your repo, right? So you go to your, your repo on GitHub where you forked your, uh, the C CD for ML scenarios, right? And then just in the first, um, in the root directory, right? There's a... Um, we go here, so workshop instructions, right? And then there's this link here called here. You click that. Yes. So, so when you click that, and then it will take you, so there's an option, there's a link here as well to uh, get a personal access token page, right? This is the quickest way of, of doing it, but nonetheless, you could, you know, it could be in your, uh, in your GitHub, okay? And I think uh, if you go to settings, and then uh, what is it? Yeah, probably that's the best way. Um, yeah, to find it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's the best way to find it. So just use that link. Uh, let me see what the link actually. Let me just send it. So this yeah, is I am the, there. I am yeah. there, but uh, okay. okay, I'm where to create the the notes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I'm, I've also sent the link to to the chat to get the tokens. Okay. So we have to select the repo and and what? Say again. We have to select the repo and... Yeah, go to your own repo. You can just go to this link here. Since you're logged in, then it should be fine. You can just go to the link on the chat. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry, can you show us what you clicked when you're creating the access token? I've sent the link to uh, to, to the chat on, uh, on Google Meet. So just click on that. So it's github.com slash settings slash tokens.
Yes, thanks, Martin. All right. Okay. So you let me know when that's done. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so here they, they're showing you, you select repo, you select user email, but I just did user. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, we're not deploying it yet, so I think let's just get, you know, enough access. Uh, if we're deploying it, then we'll, you know, maybe want to be more careful what um, rights we give these uh, applications. But for now, it should be fine. Cool. Right? And then, yeah, so there was user, repo, yeah, and then there was the other one, the third one, which they're not showing here, but I think it's admin, read, and write. Right? Cool. So if, if, if you are moving faster than, than the... Uh, then the whole class, you could follow these instructions uh, that are on here, right? Uh, but I'll be, I'll be going through them as well. Okay. So just let me know when that's done. When we clone, we can't we get the remote connection? Is there special thing for the tokens? Um, Abel, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Could you please elaborate? Abel? Okay, no problem. You got it, that's fine. Uh, so just look in terms of what other options you choose. Um, it's here, right? So it's a repo and you and user or just uh, yeah, I think yeah, user email. So let me just go to mine. Um, so that's the link. If I go to mine, so I've selected repo. I've selected, so basically this is more like just selecting admin and selecting um, user, right? Uh, so probably, yeah, we wouldn't need some of this. So I think that should be enough. We just need the email, right? But yeah, that's that's what you select, right? Um, yeah, I don't need to update my token, but So when you generate your token, you will get uh, some token there, right? Um, so you get some token there, and then you just need to copy that, right? So so what I do, I just screenshot the whole thing, uh, because you see, as you can see here, you know, once you, well, if you don't save your, your token, once you lose it, then you can't get it again. You may have to generate another one. So just make sure uh, the best way that, that I do it is just screenshot the whole thing and then copy and, you know, maybe save it somewhere else. But yeah, okay. So. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Yep, thanks, Enoch. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. Hey, I think the best best way is to choose it. Um because I'm not sure um if uh, some of the tools would fail uh, because of not having those permissions. So, so it's the safest way is to just select it because it, it, the things can break <laughs> down the road. Uh, and if, if we do, if they do, then you'd have to come all, all the way back. So best that you, that you select it. Right? I haven't tested not selecting it. So things may break, uh, you know, down the road. <clears throat> okay. So that's that. I'll just keep this open here. Okay, so now we have um, our access token. Yeah, you will give it, you know, whatever no, uh, name that you want to give it. Um, okay. And I think we've already done this step. You, you've already cloned um, the code into, into, into your machine, 
right? So now what we need to do, uh, before all of this, okay? So I think I probably I moved too fast. Okay, what we also need to do, Oh, okay. No, I didn't move too fast over here. <clears throat> okay. So there's this step here. Um, if you don't have Docker desktop, don't worry. Actually, even if you do have Docker desktop, don't worry about it. Uh, basically, what it's saying is this. I'm sure there should be some way of, of making these changes. Um, okay, don't I have it here? Okay, I'm not finding it. Okay, it's fine. I'm just gonna run it quickly. But anyway, so basically, if you open uh, Docker desktop, right? So normally, I think the uh, CPUs, I think it's four, right? and memory is under uh, four gigs it's like two something one point something right don't change it right just leave it as it is so don't don't implement the step um when i did my machine slowed down considerably so uh, unless you've got like maybe 16 gigs um of of, of ram or 32 gigs don't don't um up it to four so just just skip this this step unless you have a lot of ram because okay. otherwise your machine will slow down uh, too much that it will make it impossible to, to follow the tutorial. Right? Okay. So in, some, in terms of, I'm hoping, because uh, we're already halfway. Uh, <laughs> yes, if you have 16 gigs, then maybe I have eight. So <laughs> uh, if you can step more, please. I, oh, yeah. So, so Michael, just... Yeah, so the Docker step here, right? I'm saying skip it, uh, don't implement it, don't do it. Uh, it's just increasing the amount of uh, memory that your program is going to have, right? So this repo here uh, that we have, uh, this uh, CD for ML scenarios, right? We're, we're just giving it access to more uh, memory because I think Docker limits how much of your computer's memory it can access. So that step, basically, what it does is it just increases that, right? So you don't need to do it. Um, yeah. Because if you do it, unless you have a lot of memory, you, sh you should already have Docker. Docker. You sh uh, I'm assuming. So if you don't have Docker, uh, you should install Docker. Uh, I assume because of the last tutorial that you already have Docker. Right. So if you check if you have Docker, just type Docker on your terminal. Okay. So you see with mine, if I type Docker, then you know I get a whole lot of information about usage of Docker. So there's two things that we're going to need. We need Docker, and then we will need um, Docker Compose. Right. So if you type Docker Compose on your machine, it must also print out you know the usage information. So you need those two. Uh, two things, um, but I can make it a bit easier for you. Let's see. Okay, so yeah. So if you are if you are using Windows, um, I think you can just you know go to Docker. Uh, install Windows. And, and I think the same for Mac OS, right? So if you go to the Docker site, it will show you how to, you know, so actually this one will give you Docker desktop. Um, yeah. So I'm not, yeah. So Docker desktop should come with Docker. I had to install it separately because I just installed the, um, 
the Docker for, for Ubuntu, right? So if you're using Windows, I'll, I'll post the instructions here. But if you don't have Docker, if you're using um, Windows, follow that. Uh, if you are using Linux, um, I already have code here for it. Uh, I can, okay, this seems like a lot. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Yeah, so there's a script here. Okay, so I'll upload it. So there's this script. Let's see if there's an easier one. Yeah, it's just about the same. They're all doing about the same stuff. So that's the one for, for Docker on Ubuntu. And I should have another one for Docker Desktop. Oh, no, actually, with Docker Desktop, it's different. Um, okay, so let's first, let's start with uh, Docker on Ubuntu. And then we will do, Docker Compose is easy, right? So, but installing Docker is a, is a bit difficult. So I will do this. So I'm just gonna post it um, on your on your on your folder, right? In the week two folder. So I'll show you how to run it. So if you don't have Docker, um, So which one is install Docker? Okay, so that's the one. Okay, so let's run it. So you could run it if you download it onto your machine. You could run it as bash uh, install Docker Ubuntu like that, right? Or right, or you just do ch mod plus x install Docker Ubuntu. And ampersand ampersand because these two steps must be done together. Well, one after the other, right? So this just says when this succeeds, then do this. So it's just a way of saving you from having to to call best. You can just run it as an executable. Right? So those are the two ways you can run it. Okay, I'm just gonna post that. And yeah. So there's that one, you can just run it directly or make it an executable. So when you make it an executable, next time you do it, because for me actually here, it's already an executable. That's why it's blue, well, it's green in color. Right? So next time you wouldn't have to do both. You just need to do the, the second one. But for the first time, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, I think for search mode, you don't even have to, you don't have to use sudo. You can just run it like that. Uh, it's not, you know, guys who, who are installing um, Docker and, 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 yeah, on your machines. So the other thing that you need to install, it's this thing called Docker Compose. So with, with Ubuntu, it's really simple. Uh, I'll just show you. So it's just sudo apt install Docker Compose. Right? Um, okay, great, great. Uh, ahead, me. Great. Uh, yeah, also, yeah, the Docker desktop, you don't need to. I think, also, in the interest of time, I think we can we can uh leave that. Um, yeah, uh, but you know, so yeah, so that's, that's it for Docker Compose for Windows. I'm not sure you could search as well for Docker Compose Windows. Start Docker Compose and then they'll show you the yeah you get the the way to do it there right yeah so you, if you come here select Windows and then yeah um, uninstallation yeah 
Yeah, I think probably yeah, I think probably you don't, you don't even need it. I think when you have Docker desktop, it comes with with that, right? So you probably don't need Compose. Once you've installed uh, on Windows, once you've installed um, this one, um, uh, Docker desktop, right? Uh, but I I have it, but I had it on. Okay, let me just install so I can show you that. Uh, Look at this top. So this is also simple on Ubuntu, right? Uh, it's quite simple. So the quickest way is to get, uh, get Linux. There's a Debian file. So basically for, for Ubuntu to install Docker desktop, uh, Binyam, what's your question? How do we take it? We have the uh, Docker controls. If, on if you have Docker. If you have? Docker controls. Uh, yeah, so it's the same way as, as Docker, right? You just type on your terminal, type Docker, right? So for Docker, that's what you type. And for Docker Compose, you just type Docker Compose. And if you get, if, if, if you get um, a response, right? If you, you don't get an error, then you have it. Then it's been installed. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for Docker desktop, so for me, because I'm using Ubuntu, so RPM, I think, is when you're using right there, it's essential. So my connection is not too slow. So I'm just going to show you what I'm trying to explain here. So I have, I have Docker... Um, desktop on the other machine. Uh, so it's taking a while. But mean, while we do that, all the start notes, um, we can try to uh, move ahead as well. Right. So in the setup of, you know, so there's two development environments here, like this, the two options that they're giving you. There's the local machine environment, which means that you know, installing everything, you know, here in, in, your, in your box, right, in your own box. So these are the instructions that, that you can use to follow, right? Um, so you install in, you know, this virtual env, so like a virtual environment, more like um, Conda, right? Uh, but it's very minimalistic, right? Uh, where you can install uh, Python packages in there, right? So you can do this, uh, but, uh, I've opted for this other the Jupyter Lab to the environment, right? So it's it's much easier, right? which is the one that's going to need uh, Docker Compose. Right? Um, so so what you do, right? So in the meantime, what you'll do is this: copy this instruction, and you go into into your repo, right? So if I show you where I am, so I am at CD4 ML, which is development for machine learning, right? And what I do is I just paste that, right? Um, and then this this actually takes a very, very long time, right? Uh, so you just let it run, uh, and then we'll come back to it, right? You let it run. So basically, what that's what you need to run. Uh, if you if it needs you to do, if, if you get an error, just do sudo. Right, if you get an error, uh, but otherwise, uh, let's see. Okay, let me move it here. Otherwise, what you need to do, if I do yeah, okay. Otherwise, you need to add yourself as a, as part of the Docker group. So just say uh, run Docker without sudo, right? 
So either this instruction will work, right? Either this without the sudo will work. If you get an error, try sudo. But if you don't want to use sudo, you can come here. I think you know this one should be fine. Um, so you just do these two steps, right? Actually, I, I should have this thing already in the script. Um, so you just do just these two steps, that and this one, and this one, right? So you just need to run these two things. If if you're getting an error without sudo, and then this one, then you going forward, you won't have to use uh, sudo uh, to run Docker or Docker Compose, right? This thing just makes your life a bit easier. I think you probably, once you've done it, you probably have to close your terminal and then reopen it so that it can it can load these changes. Are we still together, guys? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, just post this. Okay, that's the one thing you need to run and then run this one so allows you to run docker or docker compose without sudo right without being root because you've already added yourself you know as part of of the root users so to say so that's what that does Okay. So don't be. So when you run this, uh, uh, so when you run this one here, when you run this, it will take a while, the first time. Uh, but after that, you know, it doesn't take as long. Uh, yeah. So this is what you run. Okay, it says remove offense. So in case there's images that were built, but the encode. So basically, what I mean, we, we touched on this, but maybe you know um, we can touch on it again. Um, so this Docker Compose is a way to sort of weave together uh, multiple different Docker files, right? So instead of having one huge uh, Docker file, right? What you can do, which is what they've done here, what you can do, so you see you have Docker file Jenkins, right? So they have a, you know, a decent Docker file, right? For Jenkins, they have another one. For min.io, they have another one. For ML4 flow, they have another one for your models, right? So you have about, you know, four uh, Docker files, right? Uh, don't worry about, you know, that fact that it's not named Docker file. Um, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, but then the way it, it, it gets called is different from, you know, your normal uh, Docker build, right? So if it's just Docker 5, then you can go into your, your directory and say Docker build uh, here or dot, right? And then it will look for Docker 5. But if you rename it, you give it, you know, something like this. Let me just type it. Okay. <clears throat> so if you, for example, here, because you have it as Docker file main IO, right? So basically what this Docker Compose, so Docker Compose is controlled uh, by this Docker Compose YAML file, right? Um, just as Docker is, con is, is controlled by this Docker file, right? So when you do Docker, it will look to a file called Docker file, right? But this one, this is not the file, right? I think the file is in, uh, okay, I'm going to say this. Okay, so you see here, they have it as just Docker file, right? But here they have it as Docker file hyphen something, right? So the way you would do it here, you'd say Docker build, right? This is the first time, right? You don't have any of those, um, you know, um, repos. You don't have any of those containers, right? So you'd say Docker build, and uh, you say minus F, which is just staying file, but right? you're, so you're telling it because when you, you've not named it Docker file, it won't know. Right? So when you say minus F, then you're giving it the file name, right? But 
if you are in this directory, right, where there's Docker file like this, you don't have to do this. You can just do Docker build here. And it will build, right? But normally, uh, whether whether you're using this uh, format or this format, you might you have to say something like this. So let's say you're using the second format minus t, uh, which is a tag, and then uh, in this case, say fluent d. Uh, I think it's fluent d. Let's say latest. And then let's say uh, you need use Google, right? So this is, you know, the, 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 the account, right? If you push to Docker Hub, right, this will be the account, and this will be the name of your of your of your safe system, of your container, and then this will be the version. The last thing is the version. If you don't give it version, it will just append latest. Right. And we're still together, guys. Uh, I hear silence. Okay, perfect. So please let me know if when you have Docker and Docker Compose or Docker Desktop on, on your Windows. So so when you do, right, please run this, this command. Right? When you're done running this command, so, um, so maybe what you want to do uh, before running this command, uh, please hold on. If you are, if it's running, you can just cancel it. Before running this command, uh, please do this. Uh, open you. There's a requirements file there, right? It's requirements file there. There they have, you know, Flask uh, version one dot one dot one, right? But I would like you to change it to two dot one dot zero. Uh, I'm not sure if. It, this thing matters whether it's small letter or big, uh, but it should be probably this, right? So just comment this out and then use this. Uh, but I think if you use that without without the version, then it will just take the latest, right? Uh, because there's some error with Ginger. Um, I think Ginger is the te templating uh, system that they use for Flask. So there's an error there. The, and I think uh, I'm told that the error has been solved by upgrading Flask. So before you build, before you do Docker Compose, then just change that to this. Uh, yeah, so just do this instead of the latest so that um, all our versions can be uniform. But I think even if the, it's the latest, we shouldn't have any issues. All right. So this will run for a very long time. Right. I don't want to run it because mine is already running here. Uh, if I run it, then, you know, yeah, it doesn't take too long, but uh, we don't have the luxury of more time. Right? So when this is done, I'm just going to put it like this. Let's go it here. Okay. Uh, when that is done, you do this. That's a question. Yeah. Uh, start running. Instruction without you have you've started, yeah. So, Docker Compose build is running, yes. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, so if this is running, just let it run once it's done, then it's not the same instruction, but just do it like this just to Docker Compose up without the rest of this. So just delete this and just like this. Just do yeah, Docker Compose. One more step. Problem. Sorry. You said uh, we need to change that again. The Flask version on, in the requirements. Yes. Yes. Yeah. When if, so because you could run it, it's fine. If you change this, it will be it will be quick, right? Because the first time you run it, it's pulling a lot of images, right? Uh, so I can show you. So the first time you run it, so if we do Docker, if we do Docker images, right? Then it's building these images. Right? One, two, three, uh, I think four, I think this is, no, this is not one. Yeah. 
yeah, there's a lot of images that it's, it's yeah, five, you see, there's a lot of images, six, seven, eight, you see, there's a lot of images that it's pulling, and you can see even the the amount of of space, of the size of the, of the, of the container, it's huge, right? It's one big, right? This is also big, let's see, this, this three here, right? They're quite, they're quite big, right? So if you have uh, internet connection, it will be faster. If it's not so good, take a while. Right? But now, you know, you've already, once you do it, the next time you do it, it's going to use the same one that you already have. Unless, even if you change some things, uh, what it will do is, it will only change that. That's why I was talking about layers um, the last time. Right? Because the way it builds it, it builds it, it, builds it in layers. Right? So, uh, if we go... <coughs> Just get a random this get any right? So basically what it does, so you see all these instructions, what Docker will do. The problem is this in a separate layer, this in a separate line in a separate layer. It could all of these things in a separate program in a separate post, but I'm not sure how to really explain. But most of this could be is and run uploaded in separate layers. So that when you know you have another um, container which, is, which has something like this, right? So we build it in. So what would happen when you have done this, right? So with this, people uh, store and files and some which is requested because this is file and then all of the content of the documents are getting stored. When it's done, with that, uh, when you make a change, it will. It won't, it won't reduce all of this and so on that. It must be really what you need. But it will make a change in this layer. So it will still be faster if you make a change. Yeah. Um, my sound is... My sound is... Can anyone hear me? I'm not clear. Oh. Okay, I don't know what I need to do. Uh yeah, because I can't I can't just start my Wi-Fi. If, if I do, we'll have a problem because it means I have to start everything from scratch. Uh let's hope it improves. And I also try to speak a bit louder, I guess. Uh, but if, if anything I say, it's not... Okay, perfect, perfect, Matt. I, I think there was some interference there. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right. Um, so we've done this. Uh, most guys have done this. Uh, you know, so first, Docker Compose up, uh, minus D, the dash dash build dash dash uh, remove orphans. Right? So I think this this one is just says in detached mode, right? Uh, yeah, but let's not get into that. But yeah, don't worry about it. Um, so run that when that's done. Run this when you run Docker Compose up. You will see this what you're seeing on my screen now. It's a lot of printout. Um, a lot of things being print, uh, printed out here, but uh, so where is my so I do Docker Compose up right. So what it does is it you know it starts up all my um, my containers right because remember in Docker Compose in here right this is how I pull all my containers together right so. Services, I have this welcome, which I guess is the main one that controls everything. And then um, it connects to Jenkins. Uh, so, okay. Uh, okay, so it's Jenkins here. There's Elasticsearch here. This is Kibana. It's FluentD. Model, it's your model code. Main IO. This is for storage. ML flow, 
orchestration of, of your models, uh, dev, uh, which is just Jupyter, right? And, you know, some uh, volumes there, which is just, you know, your, your local storage, how it gets mapped to the container, right? Because it's, it's a different file system, right? So there has to be a way to map that, right? So there's a bunch of things here, and that are saying uh, the way these things uh, get run depend on, uh, so for example, so here there's no build, uh, I think basically you are getting this image already, so they're using reusing this image. But here it's a build, so you see the build specifies this Docker file. So this one is the one that's going to be used, and everything that's there will be installed. Then there's other things here, ports being mapped. This is, I think, this is on the on the container, and this is on your machine, right? Um, no, if the thing is the other way around. Ten thousand eighty eighty. Let's see. Um, so here, so this is my Jenkins, it's 10,000. Okay. So this is what it means, right? Those ports. So I'll show you how to get to this, this, this thing. So local host 10,000, it's been mapped here, right? They're saying that on my machine, on my, um, host machine, um, this is the port, um, uh, number and on the guest, I think host guest, I think, yeah, I'm, I may be getting it the other way around, but there's the guest, I think this is the host and this is the guest, right? Which is the container. And it's mapping it to, to this um, port, port number here, right? Um, yeah, and then there's other things that are being specified here to do with the environment, uh, you know, etc. Oh yeah, so there is something that I'm forgetting. So while it's running, uh, I'm not sure, guys, if you have other things to attend, uh, but we can keep going. Um, if you're happy with that, maybe 15, 20 more minutes, and then I can, you know, tell you how to actually uh, complete the scenario, right? Because uh, this is very interesting. So maybe uh, while we are here, um, so you, you see that we have, that's why I wanted that article. Um, should have pulled it before, okay. So you see, so these things, um, so Jenkins is more, it's your CI, CD platform, right? There's, you know, there's other options. So we used, last time we used GitHub Actions, right? There's Travis, which is, I think that's the, the previous trainees used. Uh, there's Bamboo, there's a lot, right? But in this, um, in this scenario, they're like using Jenkins, right? So if you get this scenario done, what you may want to do is substitute Jenkins for get up actions and see how, how it pans out, right? That'll be something interesting to, to try out. I think when you do that, you actually understand how all these things communicate, how it all works together, right? And then here, Elasticsearch and Kibana, <coughs> it's part of the Elastic uh, stack, right? Elasticsearch is just a, a, a no SQL database. So it's a, you know, it's a, the data there is stored as dictionaries or JSON files, right? Um, yeah, so that's what it is. So it's it's, it's an unstructured database, right? Semi-structured because it's JSON, right? And then Kibana is the visualization. So what I'd also maybe do is now, instead of Kibana, right? So Kibana is also a visualization platform. It's like Streamlit, right? You could want to see, okay, what if I take out Kibana and use Streamlit, right? How would that work out? And Fluent D, uh, I think it's um, it, it's 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 like a, um, it moves data right from one location to another, right? Like maybe from your local environment to Elasticsearch, right? Because I, I think that's what it's about. Um, there's other things like uh, Kafka that you could use. Uh, I think there's also uh, Elasticsearch has things called bits, you know, Elastic metric bit, file bit. So maybe you know, in this case, you may want to use file, whatever. But I think that's this is the um, the new thing that they're using, right? To move data from some environment. I think in this case, for us, would be local environment to the Elasticsearch database, and then visualizing that in Kibana, right? You may want to visualize that with Streamlit, right? Um, yeah, MLflow, you know. So I think uh, M Min IO is is a is a it's an object, it's an object store, right? It's like you can store um, 
using MinIO, uh, you know, data or S3 or, or GCloud, et cetera. I think that's what it, that actually does. So this is like a whole uh, production grade architecture, right? So um, that's what makes it quite deep and, and very interesting, right? Okay. Yeah, so I just needed to explain the components of this thing, which you can see even here. So Jenkins, think of Jenkins as, you know, GitHub Actions, or the CI CD, which allows you to build, test, etc. cetera. Um, I think we'll, we will get to look at this. Um, Elasticsearch, NoSQL database, Kibana for visualization, think of it like Streamlit, uh, FluentD, just for moving um, data between systems. Uh, this is your model, you know, uh, this is the object storage. So um, probably that, yeah, probably that moving data from some, some uh, cloud platform into Elasticsearch, probably that, you know, that's what this is happening here, right? But this is a very interesting um, uh, bunch of uh, scenarios. There is two scenarios that they have here. Um, so maybe this is the best way to show it. Okay. Two uh, machine learning scenarios that they're looking at. There's a comment. Oh, did you? Okay, thanks, Biniam. <coughs> um, okay, uh, someone is asking about Docker, what it does. Um, I'm not sure if you know someone w wants to explain that uh, to Didier. Um, yeah, uh, but it's uh, yeah. Um, I mean, we we, we had this um, discussion in the last session, but it's a con. It, it, it's um it's a way to 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 handle um your your environments basically. So it's like it's like your image. It's like you, you you create multiple images or multiple containers, and you have your you know everything that you want to install. So for example here, right, uh, we have a <coughs> you have a requirements file, right? Right, your requirements file. And what we do, what we do, uh, what we've been doing is we've installed, you know, these requirements in here. We've installed this. Oops, cancel that. We've installed these requirements in Anaconda, right? Okay. We've installed them in Anaconda. I think it's in Bin, right? So these are all the things that we've installed into Anaconda, right? But this is. On my machine, right? So I can't move. The, I can't move this. It's been installed on my machine. I can't move it, right? But if I install it in Docker, right? If I install it in this one, right? In CD4 ML, right? It's not on my machine. That means we can share this, um, you know, container or image, right? Because the container when it's running is an image when it's it's not running, right? So that's what Docker is about, right? So you don't, you can just build once and it's easier to rebuild, right? You can push uh, to Docker Hub, you can, you know, uh, I mean, I think all the cloud platforms now have, um, AWS have their own version, uh, Google Cloud have their own version, right? So it allows you to move, um, you know, your, 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 I would say like, sort of like a whole computer, right? Like your whole system from one place to another. Which you can't do if you install in Panda, right? I'm not sure if that that explains it, um, but yeah, it's a um, it's a way to manage your dependencies, etc. Um, and it, it makes it easy to do development and deployment, right? Okay, I think uh, DDS is okay for now. Right. Um, okay, so someone is getting an error. Yeah, that's correct, Martin. Containerizes, but you need to explain what containerization actually means. That's what I was trying to explain. Uh, uh, Docker daemon is not running. Yeah, so I think here you may wanna do one of this. You may wanna use try use sudo, right? Try use sudo or 
Let's go run this. Remember these two instructions. This this one and then the other one. I think it's because you're not running uh you know Docker compose with um that's the error I was talking about. I think that's the same same one that I got. So if you're running with sudo, you shouldn't have an issue. So just run sudo docker compose and you should be fine. Okay. Uh, Uh, I'm not sure. Um, nah, I doubt it because we're only sh showing you today. Um, I'm not sure when this uh, related task is due. Um, this month, are you, are you online? Um, okay. Well, so I think a lot of people are still struggling in with running this, um, with running Docker Compose, because you need to get, we need to get here. So, you know, okay, so let me see if I still have, okay, it's, it's been a while, okay, that's fine. So it will run, it will pull all these images, right? It will pull all these, not all of them, because some of them are just are my own images, which are not related to uh, to the current um, scenario, or to the current project that we're working on, right? But these ones, that's what it will do. It will pull those ones, it will pull this one, it will pull, I think I've seen this one as well. Um, it will pull this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, okay? Okay, so let's see if I can take a phone the author. Okay, that's fine. Though. So, um, so okay, this is what's happening here. So, the the containers have been pulled, right? And now you see it's 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 loading this up, right? It's loading them up, it's loading them up. And there's a you know a bunch of things that are happening here, but it's showing you with with each container, you know, what's the information or what is it doing with that, right? So, min I O, you know, so almost. Every every container here will have an endpoint, right? So for min IO, this is the endpoint. Uh, you can go to it and see. Um, That's Jenkins. Here, here's an IO. Okay. Oh, it's opening on in Chrome. Yeah, okay. I don't want it in Chrome. But it's here. Right. It's here. Right. And you can you know what we're we've got in here access key and secret key how to you know how to log into that right cool um yeah but basically th this would be um i'd say you know step one system setup but there's a, there's a lot of things um coming once you have this right uh because once you do um once you do a docker compose app so after running so i probably need to 
update uh, some of these instructions. Um, after running this whole thing, this um, full instruction, then you just run Docker Compose up, and then this is what will happen. You'll see all of these things uh, on your screen. I see a question. Uh, we are for super user sudo. Um, I think you are referring to these ones. I'm just going to paste them again. Faith, uh, are you referring to these ones? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, you can do that uh, and not have to use uh, sudo, or you can just use sudo uh, if it will take you longer. But yeah, you can do that. You just run those. You need to restart your terminal so, so that they can take effect. Right? So I was saying that, um, so here, what's happening is, so now, now basically we're running our system, right? When we do Docker Compose build, we're just building it. We're just, uh, you know, pulling images, uh, linking uh, images together, right? Containers together. But now we want, you know, to have the system up and running. That's why we just do Docker Compose up uh, so we can see what's happening. So all of these things are happening, right? With MinIO, these are the settings, the things that are happening. There's a welcome server, you know, this is the information about it, you know. Um, yeah, and what's common is that with, with all of these, they will, they will give you the URL uh, or, or IP address where it's running, um, you know, models. Uh, and some of them, you know, you have errors. Uh, so I still have this error, okay. Oh, I probably I didn't rebuild it. That's the one, the ginger one that I was uh, talking about. That's why I said, you know, upgrade your task, right? Uh, so there's that error. Uh, some of these errors you can ignore, but um, some of them you can't, right? So just um, be be aware of that. To see if you if you ignore it, if you can continue, but if you can't continue, try to solve solve those errors. And fluent uh, D as well, you know all the information about it. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot to read. Um, and of course Jenkins as well, you know. But for the most part, you see all of all of these um, uh, different uh, parts of the system are in good condition. They're up, they're running, you know, maybe a warning here and there, but everything seems fine. You know, dev is fine. Um, you know, this is where you find it. Um, so dev would be, this is your Jupyter notebook, right? Because we chose the Jupyter notebook uh, format. ML flow is fine. Um, the elastic search is fine. You're getting some information out of the elastic search there. Uh, yeah, you see. And because we're working with Jenkins, I think these are the logs, you know, as you're working with Jenkins, some of them are, are logs, right? So Kiban, Kiban is fine as well, right? Um, yeah, it's all the way, all the way, all the way, right? There's a lot of happening. So this is, these are the logs um, as, as we're interacting with the system. Um, okay, let's see where you guys are with regards to that. Okay. Yeah, on Windows, uh, this won't work. Uh, sudo, that's that won't work if you're using Windows. But I think Binyam is right. You can open your Windows terminal as an administrator. Um, I said a lot more people are quiet now. Um, does anyone have Docker Compose running and downloading the images? Uh, just if you can say something in the chat where you are, with, you know, downloading those images. Um,
Guys, I, I forgot actually. Um, I have another meeting uh, coming up after this. Uh, let's uh, let's um, continue this on on Slack, right? Um, go through these instructions, right? Uh, at least until you have you have all your images downloaded and you're able to start up um, all the services. Okay. And then, and then, yeah, and then we'll, we'll continue uh, with this scenarios uh, after that. But um, just to show you, uh, okay. So basically, when you're done, is you can just go to next section. You go to next section, and it'll tell you, you know, how you set up Jenkins, right? Um, tell you how to do that. Um, and once you're done with Jenkins, then there's two scenarios. There's the housing scenario and the shopping scenario. Right? So you choose which one to go for. Right? That's, um, and, and how to access, like I was saying, everything is, you know, as a URL that you can see. <clears throat> so that's the scenario. When you're done with it, either you, you take that one or you take the... Uh, there's a gross status one and there's a housing one, so you choose whichever one you choose. Uh, you go to the next section. Uh, that's just where you do the continuous delivery part of it, right? Um, and then this is your, now you, you know um, creating pipelines, etc. You also do create your pipelines in um, uh, in in Jenkins, right? Um, yeah. So and then you know you also get to visualize. So it's a, it's a complete end-to-end -end system, right? So, and yeah, you can reuse if you, yeah, I think, I think it's open source, you can reuse some of this code and, and adapt it uh, to your own, to your own system, right? Uh, but I think, yeah, like I was saying, in terms of, in terms of how to get all this service, if you can here, right? So there's Jenkins, uh, I think Kibana, Jupyter Lab, MLflow. These are all the uh, once once you are here, once your system is running. Uh, these are all the the URLs which are local that you can use to find uh, where things are. So, for example, with me, this is the CD for ML uh, system, right? Where there's two scenarios: grocery and housing. Grocery and housing, right? Then you can see here. There's models, you know, view all models, view the license models, right? So this is how you can select models and, and do all your, um, you know, updating of, of, of your system. And this is, you know, Jenkins. Okay, why am I not able to go on? Same thing. Okay, well, okay. Yeah. So for that, um, yeah, um, yeah. So anyway, uh, this is, I'll, I'll explain to you. I'm just explain it now. Um, so the username is admin. Um, it's not really clear in the instructions. The username is admin, but um, I think I found it somewhere in the code. But what you need to do uh, is inside. Inside here, inside the Jenkins folder, you see there's there's two files for you there. Right? I've added another file here. Jenkins admin uh, password. Just the name must be must be the same as this Jenkins admin password.txt, right? And then you put in your password, just only your password, right? Uh, so for me, this is what the file looks like, right? That's my password. You put in your password on the first line, and that's it. And then that's the password. When you log in here, that's the password that you'll use. Right, you said the username is admin, and then the password is whatever password you can even you know use. I mean, of course, for production, I wouldn't advise it. It needs to be different and much more complicated, <clears throat> right? But uh, I want to just want to show you a pipeline. Okay, so so okay. Also, there it, it tells you about using Blue Ocean, right? Uh, for me, it didn't work out. There's some issues with Blue Ocean. Right. So Blue Ocean it seems like a, a new user interface that allows you to use Jenkins 
uh, in a more intuitive way. So it's better than the old uh, Jenkins, but I couldn't get that to work on my part. So I, I had to do it the old fashioned way, right? uh, where I go to new item, So I go to new item and then I create my pipeline. So I give it a name and then I select pipeline and then I, 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 I keep going, right? So um, yeah, so if you, if you struggle with, with, with uh, Blue Ocean, just do it this way. But this is uh, one of my pipelines. So I wanna see, so this is build, build history. Okay. So this is, you know, some of some of this failed. Uh, I think. Uh, okay. So if you go to okay, I think it's this one. And then console output, I think. No. Well, yeah, this one will show you what happened as well. Um, so these are all the instructions. This is all the different, so it's a pipeline, and this is all the different uh, steps in your pipeline that executes. Everything else worked out except for this one. Um, for some reason, you can't find it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. But all the others, uh, if you do, if you look at the pipeline steps, you can see status, everything is green. The only thing is, is this one that you can't find, right? Uh, but if I go into code, uh, I think that is Jenkins. You can see that, you know, it's being copied, right? Instead, it's being copied into the container, so it should be fine. But also in, in my repo, Also in my repo, it's there, right? So it's pulling um, the, the repo properly. Uh, so that's something that I need to look at. But all, all the other, um, you know, uh, steps have passed. But if you don't have your, um, your requirements, all your requirements installed, then, you know, other things will break going forward, right? Um, yeah, so that's that. And that's your Jupyter notebook. Um, so because you have, you have your modules, right? So your models, your models are here. Problems, groceries, and algorithms, etc. Right, decision tree, uh, all those that information. So then you can you can use your notebook to make changes to to your code. Um, then what else do we have? Uh, so we also have ML flow here, and we have Kibana here. Okay, it's so ML flow. <coughs> you can you know run your experiments, you know, uh, check your models, etc. Um, yeah, right. So those are all the different parts of the system uh, which are working together. And then here you also have your key banner for visualizations, which as I was saying is you know you could replace it with Streamlit if you like. Um, yeah, and Jenkins, you can replace with GitHub uh, actions, um, et cetera. Right. So guys, let's, uh, let's continue working on this. Um, and, and let me know via Slack uh, if I need to help, et cetera. Okay. Um, then I can do it. A quick question. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're good uh, for now. I think you can end the recording. Yeah, so guys, just continue uh, working on it. Uh, 